Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to continue reading the diary of German Oberlieutenant Martin Steglitch. Remember to rate this video as well as leave your opinion about the story. And we'll begin. February 14, 1942. Pinkovo. It's a wonderful winter day. The sun shines bright and there's no severe frost. The second officer of the general staff ordered me to report to the regiment because being the fifth wheel doesn't suit me. And now I have orders from the division to wait for summons to attend a course of educational films. That's the name of this thing that should be held in Berlin. Everything is all right in my company. It's February 22nd, the headquarters of the Land Forces Command, the city of Lotzen. I need to tell about everything consecutively in order to keep the memory of this time forever full of trials and impressions that overwhelmed me in such quantity as I have never seen before. After all, I had arrived here straight from the front, and I found myself in a totally new environment. Actually, on February 16th, I was about to go to the rear services of our regiment to make inquiries about my affairs there. Being idle, I was constantly waiting for the order to be sent to Germany. The order came on February 15th by telegram from the Land Forces High Command, Oberlieutenant Stiglitz should immediately leave at the disposal of the Land Forces General Headquarters, Department of the Inspector General of Infantry. The arrival should be reported to the headquarters where all further instructions will be given. So, on February 16th, I arrived at the airfield. I boarded the Junkers 52, which had just transported the necessary equipment, and took off towards Peskov. I took Venner with me. We sat near the onboard machine guns. There were four seriously wounded men on board with us. Near the highway to Kolm, the plane came under Russian fire, and we fired back vigorously. I arrived in Pskov at about 12 a.m. It was impossible to go further. Having contacted the courier service of the Army Group North, I got the necessary information. The departure should be on February 17th at 7.15 a.m., in the direction of Riga together with the messenger. My accommodation in Pskov was very poor. The next morning, I left in a courier officer's Mercedes for Riga and arrived there at 11.30 a.m. I reported my arrival by sending a telegram to Captain Meissner. I took a bath and had a great dinner in the pleasant atmosphere of the officer's casino. For the evening, I got a ticket to the box of the high command of the Wehrmacht forces on the eastern front. It was Don Quixote. The Riga ballet was excellent. It was a high-level spectacle. I would like to emphasize once again this unbelievable change of environment, the front and Riga. These voluntary guys leave a bad impression, and their uniforms make no sense. The next morning, I took a courier bus to the headquarters. We had a good ride, stopping in Tilsit for a lunch. Then we started on our way. The only thing that made the road challenging was the snowdrifts. It was felt that there was not enough workmen in the homeland to handle these drifts in time. At about 8.30 p.m., I arrived at headquarters and reported to Captain Meissner. After having a meal with him, I told him about the tasks assigned to me and outlined in detail the situation at the front. The next morning, I let myself take a good night's sleep. After all, I had to get to Lotzen at night and accommodate myself in the Hotel Lotzener Hof. Then I reported my arrival to Colonel Matthias from the Office of the Inspector General of Infantry. I was instructed by him to describe in writing my experience of fighting in the forest then leave for Berlin at the disposal of the Infantry Inspectorate to assist in writing the text for the educational video Combat in the Forest. In the evening, there was a dinner in the Department of the Inspector General of Infantry. It was a friendly company, only staff officers. The next day, I began my work, and then in the afternoon, I went to Major Engel to the main headquarters of the Fuhrer. Before that, I had time to visit Captain Meissner, as well as visit the Department of Training and the Department of Personnel of the Army. From there, I went to the wolf's lair. On arrival, I had coffee with Major Engel, telling him everything. He's all the same, our old great commander, as I have kept him in my memory. At 8.30 p.m. there was a dinner, which I was also invited to. I was introduced to the Fuhrer. It's impossible to forget that. And all that evening, I was extremely happy that I had such an opportunity. Major Engel presented me with night binoculars which some firm had given to the Fuhrer. It's a marvelous thing. Yesterday, on February 21st, I was again at Camp Anna. Anna is the codename of the headquarters of the Land Forces High Command. I met with Captain Meissner, and before that I paid a visit to the Operations Directorate. 
where I was questioned in detail. I had a dinner at the organizational directorate. Then I watched a movie at the military training directorate. Then I visited the casino. I can sum up my overall impression as follows. I can only say that I was overwhelmed by so many different impressions, and it takes time to process it all. All the officers of the general headquarters, with whom I managed to get acquainted, make a fantastic impression, although they are often exhausted by work. My battle uniform distinguished me sharply from the others everywhere, but it wasn't something annoying or ridiculous. On the contrary, everyone was happy to listen to the opinion of a frontline soldier and company commander about a particular subject. I used to talk frankly and openly, giving my opinion honestly. Today I have completed my writing in draft form. It still has to be finalized. On Monday night I am going by fast train to Breslau. I will spend two days with my mother, and then I will go to Berlin. April 28, 1942. France, the town of Chinon. Today it's raining again, for the third day in a row. It turns out that it's impossible to work again. For filming, we need sunshine. I took this small book in my hands and I was appalled that I haven't written anything for two months. I'll try to make up for it today. So, let's make the time jump to February 24th. I spent one day in Breslau, and the next morning I left towards Berlin. My mom and sisters were very happy. Surprisingly, my brother Gunther met me at the train station. He was wounded near Kaluga on December 23rd. It was a blind bullet wound to the thigh. Everything is fine now, although at Easter he had a second operation on his festering cecum. Luckily, everything went well, and he is now on medical leave in Breslau. On February 26th, arriving in Berlin, I reported to the Educational Films Directorate. I had never heard of the existence of such a department in my entire military career. First, I had to find a place to stay. The accommodation was found with the help of Frau Dr. Paul. On Monday, when I came to the directorate, the office of the Military History Directorate had just burned down. As a result, the whole group to which I had been assigned moved to the Grunewald, a district in the west of Berlin. I was accommodated in the premises of the Von Dirksen Foundation. Founded by the German Gentlemen's Club in 1933, the Foundation's mission was to foster contacts between representatives of Germany's traditional establishment and the National Socialists. It was named after its patron, the noblewoman and lobbyist known in Berlin as the salon owner Victoria von Dirksen. The job was initially quite boring, as I had no well-defined range of tasks, but Frau Dr. Paul took care of me and Hans, her husband, would give me tasks to keep me busy. It was moving to see the sacrifices of their parents. I used to meet this dandy comrade, Hubert. We often spent time at the Crown and at the Bristol. Once I told Hubert that the danger was that under certain circumstances, not everyone sent on leave for training would return to their former regiments. In a moment, he packed his bags and left to return to his regiment. On Sunday, March 1st, Hubert and I accompanied Frau Dr. Paul to Rathenau, a town 70 kilometers west of Berlin. We served as her honorary escort on her way to her new duty station, as she had become a military conscript. I absolutely hated being in Berlin. In general, I have nothing negative against Berlin, but nowadays these people in Berlin behave like common scum. It only added more to my antipathy. The city is utterly cold and low key. They mess up a lot of things themselves and look despondent because things don't run the way they intended. For me, a frontline soldier, all the aspirations were deeply indifferent. Our routine demanded from us quite different, tougher matters, and we never let ourselves be broken under the burden of daily worries. The comrades from Berlin only consisted of nothing but complaints and endless recitations of all sorts of petty nonsense. The next Sunday, I went to Rostock for a while. Unfortunately, I couldn't see Oberlieutenant Oberauer, but I had a wonderful evening in the male company of former servicemen from our 27th Infantry Regiment. I met all our former strategists who are now on medical leave. Unfortunately, Captain Mattenclot was among them. Isn't it a shame to the army that a man like him, who had shown utter incompetence in combat conditions, was first of all promoted to the rank of captain, and secondly was even retained on duty? In such cases, any attempt of justification looks inappropriate and entails destructive consequences. Such a character must immediately take off his uniform and disappear, 
whether his father be a general a thousand times over, I don't know, who else? I have written to the regiment about it, and everyone is as indignant as I am. I stayed in Rostock until Monday. I had to take a day extra because I met Captain Luft and Captain Ernst at the hospital. Each of them had one leg amputated. These fearless men impressed me greatly. Kuno Treitsch was very moved by my visit. The British have bombed Rostock three times in the last three nights. First of all, the residential neighborhoods. The Wehrmacht reported heavy civilian losses. And this was related to the Fuhrer's speech of last Sunday, which we, the frontliners, found heartwarming. What a true guidance for all the weak ones. It was a real pleasure to listen to these words. There was nothing much to tell about the weeks spent in Berlin. The service was going on as usual, and the duties I was to perform were gradually defined. I had the chance to look into the kitchen of the Land Forces High Command and see a lot of things, both positive and very unflattering. The disputes about competencies during the war. What else can I say about what people care about? My mission was extended, first until April 30th, and then again until special instructions. I objected as much as I could, but they kept telling me that I was needed more here than in my regiment. I had my mind and heart in eternal confrontation with each other. On March 30th, our working staff left for filming in France. For this reason, my assignment was also extended. On Sunday, March 22nd, I went home once again to get some belongings. There I got sick and spent the whole day in bed due to stomach problems. Our work in Chinot, on the VN, started to gradually unfold. We have had to face many difficulties, but the only thing that is holding us back now is the weather. In physical aspects, I get a lot of rest here, but my mind, I am always with my company. The regiment is engaged in heavy fighting and suffering casualties. There are only 20 men left in the company. Lieutenant Neumann was badly wounded and lost an eye. Fuchs and Pakowitz are dead. It's insufferable and terribly hard to hear. I am in constant expectation of reports from my Helpfeld people to know the details. My new comrades here are all excellent men. Major Forster is very good to me, a great officer. Fritz Dittmann is a great, straightforward fellow and a good comrade. And the same thing I can say about Schlipkak, the African. And about Spen from the training regiment, and about Schmidtgen. I shouldn't forget also Noldau, from the military railroads, and Fräulein Wagner, the only lady among us who handles her role splendidly. All in all, our movie staff is in good order. Last Sunday, I spent half a day with Colonel Kegler. I was delighted to have the opportunity of meeting again a man we respect greatly as a true standard of an officer. He is in command of a newly formed regiment. Kegler took me with him to Chartres, where there was a grand concert of sacred music in the local well-known cathedral. We were there with him in Le Mans, and by dinner time yesterday my Sunday excursion had come to an end, and I returned to Chinon. Well, the events I have missed are now described. That is all for today. You can watch other episodes of this diary by following the link in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and support the channel by subscribing. Bye everyone, until next time.